In this video, I'll show you how to build a really cool custom quiz question. A viewer of my YouTube channel reached out to me and showed me an example of a custom quiz question, or perhaps it was a quiz question that was built in a completely different authoring tool, and gave me the challenge, how would I build this in Adobe Captivate? And I decided that I would share it with all of you. So let's take a look here. I've built a couple of slides here. I've got my introductory slide, no big deal there. And here is the concept. So we have a question at the top here. We have three answers. Now these answers are grouped objects and they contain several elements. First of all is the A, B, or C icon at the beginning. And depending on whether the answer selected is correct or not, the icon will change to either a correct symbol with this little check mark and a green circle or an incorrect symbol, which is the X with the red circle. Simultaneously, there will also be a rollover effect, which turns the color of the selected answer to white, and then a final feedback state. Now, you'll notice that there's no submit button, and that's intentional because this style of question will give you immediate feedback, and then after a short time delay, proceed immediately to the next question. One issue that comes to mind is how do we deal with retaking the quiz if the learner wishes to do so? No problem. We'll create an advanced action which will convert to a shared action that will reset the slide when they return to this slide. Of course, we're going to use uh, essentially my custom quiz results slide uh, with an advanced action that depending on whether they pass the test or not, it will show us either this normal congratulations message or a failed and try again message here. So, so the first thing we're going to need to set up a variable to keep track of the time delay between when the learner clicks one of the answers and when it jumps to the next slide. In this case here, I'm going to click on project and go into variables and we're going to add a new variable and I think what we'll do is we'll call this v underscore time delay and we'll give it an initial value of two seconds. I'm going to save that as a variable and now I can click close. So what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of one of the benefits of shared actions in that we can reuse shared actions over and over again. So rather than writing an advanced action potentially hundreds of times, we're going to create shared actions based on some preliminary advanced actions. So the first thing we're going to need to do uh, with this slide is to cover the possibility that someone is returning to the slide uh, and retaking the exam again. So we're going to need a reset advanced action for, for starters here. So we're going to go in and execute advanced actions on slide entry. And we don't have any scripts yet, so I'll start to write those scripts by clicking on the advanced action icon. And we'll call this reset slide. Part of the other advanced action I'm going to write is I'm going to be disabling the buttons. So let's go ahead and enable the objects that potentially could have been disabled. So uh, we'll just go enable answer text A, which is the first answer here. Enable answer text B. And enable answer text C. Now I'm going to save this as an action, but I'm not actually going to use the advanced action. I always like to save the advanced action that my shared actions are based on simply because I may need to go and recreate them later or edit them. And since you can't edit shared actions, it's good to have the original advanced action that it's based upon. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save as a shared action. We'll give it the same name and this I'll put in a little description here. And I can literally just type in answer text A, B, and C. And I can now save that as a shared action 
click OK, and we can go ahead and click Close. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this from On Enter Execute Advanced Actions to Execute Shared Actions. And in this case, I'll click on the parameter icon and we will select the buttons for this particular slide here. Save that as a shared action completed. And so the on enter reset for this slide is now OK. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to write an advanced action and we'll start with the Stephen Harper answer here, which is a wrong answer. So it's a grouped object. So when I click on the group object, I need to click a second time to select the actual button, which is going to be the word Stephen Harper here. The icon is not going to be used as a button. So learners will have to click on the actual answer here. So we'll go to actions and we will execute advanced actions because we're going to start with an advanced action. I'm just going to click on the advanced action icon and we're going to start writing a new advanced action. So I'm going to click on the plus icon here to create a new advanced action. We're going to call this select answer. Now again, this is a pretty straightforward advanced action. So we just want to think about all the things that we're going to do. So in this case, the learner is clicking on the Stephen Harper answer. So we need to do a couple of things here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the state of answer icon A. And we have a multi-state object that already has the correct or incorrect. In this case, it's an incorrect answer. So we're going to choose incorrect. We're also going to change the state of the button itself. In this case, answer text A to feedback and that's sort of a selected state if you will it's going to turn the button white and it's going to change the text to a darker text the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that someone doesn't quickly select another answer because literally that would screw up with the quizzing logic here so we're going to almost immediately disable these answers so we'll disable te answer text A, disable answer text B, and disable answer text C. There we go. Now we're going to allow the learner to view the feedback, which is a simple check mark, so it won't take long. We're going to delay the next action by and I could type in a number of seconds, but then I'd have to enter that value every single time. So instead, uh, like I said before, we're going to use that variable I created that has two seconds already stored in it. And that will delay it by whatever I've entered into time delay. In this case, two seconds, but later I might decide that that's too short or too long. I can make that change. And then the final step is to simply go to the next slide. So we'll do that. I'm going to save this as an action like before. I like to always keep my advanced actions, even if I'm converting them to shared actions. And I'm going to click on save as a shared action here. So this will take care in a multiple choice question here. Something to remind you what this does. Let's put a description for each parameter so that when we're applying it to other buttons, not only on this slide, but on other slides as well, it's going to be very simple and easy to understand. So in this case here, we'll select the first parameter and we'll call that icon for selected answer. And we'll say correct or incorrect state. And I could even add depending on answer button for selected answer feedback state other answer and other answer and that's basically it so now i can save this as a shared action click ok and now i can close this as well so we're going to change this now from execute advanced actions to execute shared actions we'll make sure that we're selecting select answer and I'm going to click on the action parameters to make sure it's set up 
for the right object. So the icon for the currently selected answer, of course, is answer icon A. The correct or incorrect state, depending on the answer, so this is an incorrect example, will make it incorrect. The button for the selected answer is answer text A. And the feedback state for that is, of course, feedback. And the other answer buttons are answer text B and answer text C. So let's save that. That's done. Now I'm going to do the very same thing for these other answers. So I'm going to select the item here. We'll go to actions and we'll choose execute shared action choose select answer and we'll do the action parameters again like before so in this case the icon for the selected answer is answer icon b because we're choosing b just in trudeau uh, this happens to be the correct answer so we're going to mark it as correct here the button for this selected answer is answer text b and the feedback state is feedback and the other answers are answer text A and answer text C. Click Save. I've already selected this answer as the item to include in quiz, but I just want to pause for this moment and remind you that you'll need to indicate which one is the correct answer by checking off include in quiz. And now we'll do the same thing for this other distractor, in this case, Tom Mulcair. We'll select the button for that, go to Actions, Execute Shared Action. Again, we're going to use our selected answer, Shared Action, we'll set up the parameters. So the icon for this is Answer Icon C, and that is an incorrect answer. And the button for that is Answer Text C. The feedback state is feedback, as always, and the other answers are answer text A and answer text B. Save that, and now we're good to go. The only thing remaining at this point, we've built one slide. Uh, we'll hold off on building additional slides because I'm really excited to show you uh, one of the huge benefits of shared actions. But lastly, what we'll do is we'll customize our quiz results slide. So on enter, we need to execute an advanced action. This doesn't need to be a shared action because it's only going to reside on this one slide. So I'm going to go ahead and build the advanced action for this. So we'll click on the plus icon and we'll call this quiz results. Now this happens to be a conditional advanced action. And we're going to be using uh, a system variable that determines whether the quiz has been passed or failed. So I'm going to select variable and we're going to type in CP quiz info pass fail. So this variable can contain one of two values, either one or zero. If it's a one, the user has passed the test. If it's a zero, they've not passed the test. So we're going to say if CP quiz info is equal to the literal value of one, we will change the state of our message that we're displaying on this slide, which is feedback message here, uh, to normal. And actually, I almost don't need this statement because that is, in fact, its normal state. But if this is not true, in other words, CP quiz info pass fail is zero as equal to zero, we're going to change the state of our feedback message to failed, in which case they'll have an opportunity to try again. So I'm going to save this as an action, click OK, click close, and make sure that the on enter action is set up to run quiz results. So I think we pretty much have everything good to go here. I'm going to just suggest that you're going to want to go into your edit drop down menu, go into preferences and set up a few things for your quiz to function the way this is designed to function. Uh, so obviously any sort of reporting that you're doing, SCORM, AICC, 
XAPI, etc. You would set that up here. The settings here is that we're not going to allow the user to review the quiz, uh, but we are going to allow them to retake the quiz as often as they need to to get their 80% pass there. So those are the settings that I'm using here. I'm going to click OK. And uh, let's test this out just with the one answer to see how it works. We'll preview in HTML5, and then I'll show you how you can do this for uh, situations where you have uh, many answers or many quiz questions. So here's our title page, our introduction page. We'll click on Start. Who was elected Prime Minister of Canada in 2015? So I've got a nice rollover effect here. Uh, in this case, I'm going to start by choosing the wrong answer and therefore failing the quiz. Stephen Harper, so it shows me that it's wrong, and then it automatically goes to the next slide and tells me that I need to try again. My correct answers were 0 out of 1. So let's retake the quiz. So it's reset the slide. These buttons are now enabled again. And I can click on Justin Trudeau now. And I see that's the right answer. And I go to my quiz results slide. Congratulations, you passed this test. You got one out of one. So that works uh, entirely as expected. Now, how do I make a quiz that contains, say, 10 questions or 20 questions or even more? Once you have this built the way I've got it here, actually all you need to do is on your keyboard with the quiz question slide selected, hit Control D and duplicate it as many times as you need. Then go in and you can edit the subsequent questions. So I'm going to take a moment to uh, simply modify a few things here. Let's start off with question two and I'll change the answers. In this case, answer B was the correct answer. Uh, so we're going to need to do a few things here. So let's change this. I'm going to select the question stem and we'll come up with a new question. Now, in this case, maybe I don't want it to be answer B. I'm going to uncheck this because I'm going to make this answer C. And I'll select that. We'll go to Actions, and we'll include that in the quiz. And of course, we'll give it 10 points there, like the other one. In this case here, I'm going to change the answer to Canada. And we'll put a couple of distractors here. So we're going to need to change a few things. Now, this was already a wrong answer. Uh, so we can, of course, leave that one alone. Previously, Russia was Justin Trudeau, so we're going to need to change that. Uh, so let's go into Actions, and we'll click on our Shared Action. And really, the only thing we need to do is change this from Correct to Incorrect and hit Save. And we'll do the same thing for Canada down here. And we will change that to be the correct answer. I think it's the correct answer. And we'll hit Save. So that's all you have to do to modify one of these. Simply make a small change to which one is the correct answer, both with the reporting side in your Properties Inspector, as well as within the Shared Action. And of course, I can duplicate this a whole bunch of times. Uh, in the interest of time, I won't do that. But let's preview this in HTML5 with the number of questions that I have here, keeping in mind that we'll be seeing the same quiz question a number of times. So we'll start here. Who was elected Prime Minister of Canada in 2015? Let's get this one correct. Justin Trudeau. Which country is the second largest country in the world? Canada. And of course, Justin Trudeau is the right answer for the remaining versions of that question. So I'll just type that in and we'll pass the quiz. So I got five out of five. Congratulations, I passed the quiz. Let's reload it again and make sure it works for the opposite scenario. 
So in this case here, I'll choose wrong answers across the board. So there you go. And of course, I can retake the quiz and everything works perfectly. I can, of course, submit the correct answers now. All of my answers have been reset. It works fantastic. So here's a great way you can build a custom quiz for your Adobe Captivate project and have it work a little bit differently than the regular quiz questions that are built into Captivate. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.